Um, Tim is up next. So Tim is a GIS expert who pioneered agile adoption at Collin County. And he continues to advocate for the power of positive culture to help solve IT problems and meet real user needs. He's a grassroots agile evangelist, guiding local level agencies to discover how agile can work for them. And the poll that he would like us to answer asks, how long have you been on your agile journey? Are you just getting started? Has it been about a year, two to three years, four to five years, or over five years? Please vote and I will read the responses. 19% of us are just getting started. 16% have been doing this for a year. 33% two to three years. 7% four to five years. And 24% over five years. Welcome, Tim. Well, all right. Hey, all right. So we're just going to see what Agile looks like at the local government level. I mean, I thought Doug's uh, sort of spiritual approach was uh, fantastic. So hopefully we can bring some of that home uh, locally. Uh, I'd like to also offer up a... Uh, there we go. Uh, an alternative title. We're in kind of an alternative world. So uh, we're from the government and we're here to help. So this is how we help actually at the local level. Since I'm a GIS guy, uh, I always like to start off our presentations uh, with a map. And the reason I'm showing you this is for a couple of reasons. For one, we're in Collin County. That's just uh, kind of northeast or maybe the tipped hat of uh, the Metroplex. We're about a million, uh, million folks here. It's a very affluent, uh, mobile, and highly educated area. And this, I believe, is the sweet spot. Uh, if, if local government's going to be um, agile in any way, uh, then it's probably going to be an, a, a county like this or cities within a county like this. They're kind of on the edge, not quite the big, big cities, because maybe they've gotten too big where it's hard to, be man, hard to maneuver, hard to be agile. But if they actually get out to the edges, they're, they're, there's actually some room here. And this is what I'm actually starting to see from some of my research. Um, we got started from our CIO. She just said, hey, you guys need to look into Agile. I saw some, I saw this project being done with Scrum, whatever that is, uh, go figure it out. Well, the first thing we did was join a couple local meetups. And for those that are just getting started, I, I, could, I cannot suggest this strongly enough, is just reach out in your community and find, uh, even if you're not, even if they're not government, right, it's all going to be the same uh, concepts and principles that you can take advantage of. And we had some training. We actually brought in some folks and we had the certified scrum developer training. So we had kind of a scrum, you know, a scrum focus on this. And after the training, uh, one of the exercises that we did was a fist of five, five being what's the most, you know, what, what, uh, you know, is most likely going to happen? Will this happen? Or one being five being the most one being now this is never going to happen at all. And, and this is kind of a typical response from any time you sort of, force or suggest to uh, to any of anybody in the local government, uh, yeah, they're on the fence. We think it's going to happen. So we, we had a bit of a challenge from the, from the get-go. Um, there's my hero. That's Lance Daisy. Uh, I met him at our, the first DFW Scrum meetup that I attended, which happened to be Jim, Jim Highsmith, one of the signatories of the Agile Manifesto. I didn't realize how important he was until everybody told me how important he was, but uh, he was a nice fellow. But Lance offered up an invitation. And I think anybody, even if you've been doing this for a while, go see someone else do their, their shop. You can always benefit from this. Uh, he let me observe the sprint review, the planning, but I got kicked out of the retrospective. And that's what I wanted to see the most, but he made it clear to me. He goes, the retrospective is for the team only. Uh, and these, like I said, we're mostly focused on Scrum here. It's team only. And uh, so that means no management, no customers, and no visitors. But I did take a lot of pictures and was able to kind of take this back. So, so here's a typical day. I get a phone call from uh, our elected official, uh, county clerk. Hey, I'm going to this conference in a couple of months. Uh, we just scanned a bunch of records uh, and the genealogist would love to see it. Could you, uh, could you put something online for me? I'm like, sure. You know, why don't, uh, just shoot me an email so I don't forget. And of course, I forgot all about it. So I get a call maybe three weeks out before the conference you know, not knowing anything about it. And she's like, well, how's that project going? I'm like, well, what project? And she goes, it was that project that I said about the conference that I'm giving a keynote at, and you've got two weeks to get this, uh, <laughs> to get this ready. So I'm, I'm kind of freaked out. The whole team's kind of freaked out. But I did remember, hey, the training we had about a month ago, they were talking about sprints in two weeks. Why don't we create a sprint and see if we can get this thing done? And here's kind of what our first sprint looks like. Written down on paper, you know, uh, 
cards on the board. But what I saw immediately was once you start, once the devs start putting their thoughts on a card as a task to do, I, as manager, got to see a lot, you know, I saw there was more to this job than I thought. You know, just having a bullet point saying, just put it online. There's a lot more to that that goes into it. The customer who was really curious about whether this was going to get done on time for that conference for her or not, she wanted to know if, um, you know, is it going to be done? And she could come and see progress. She can actually see daily progress. But what I, what I didn't actually get uh, until the devs came to me and said, even though we were panicked and even though we were trying to get this thing done quickly, they said they enjoyed this project more than any other they've done because it provided focus. All they cared about was what was on the board, nothing else. There was no other project that was important. This was the only thing that mattered. So that's our agile moment. You know, that was our first agile moment that we had that, that, that maybe we like this kind of work. Maybe it's okay to put stuff on the board. And, uh, and here's our customer, Tanya, ringing the bell. Uh, that bell actually fell off the wall the moment, you know, moment after I took this picture. So now it's just sort of a, <laughs> nobody's allowed to touch it, but uh, I guess we needed to find a stud. But we rang the bell because we finished a project. We were so proud of ourselves and I couldn't wait to email my hero, Lance. Hey, we did this thing. We got it finished. You know, I'm a hero now. And he said, hey, you know, ease up, dude. Scrum really is about exposing impedances. I mean, yeah, you can, you know, it's going to be successful, but, but he kind of brought me all back in and that kind of put things into focus of instead of just doing a sprint or trying to get a project done, why don't we do all of our work this way? And so what we did next was we developed our backlog and here it is in pencil. This is actually copies of the first, you know, sprint two. you know, what do we do next? And we already had projects. We already had them kind of in order. We thought there might be some development uh, uh, opportunities here. But the one thing that I think we kind of got out of this, and this was another moment, was instead of assigning a project to a person, why don't we assign the project to the entire team? And now all the team doesn't, they don't have to worry about whether their stuff's on the board or not. It's everybody's work all the time. Just a quick glance of what, what a sprint looks like. Again, this is a, a government technique. We have our sprint transitions on Wednesdays because never, hardly ever is there a holiday and nobody asks off for Wednesdays. So they're always, <laughs> usually always here. So we have a chance to, uh, uh, you know, kind of get, get through our ceremonies uh, on Wednesdays. Uh, the backlog. I, if, I, if I can say anything else, from my experience, we've been doing this for about six years now, is having a prioritized backlog uh, has been the most effective tool that, that we have. And what we're seeing here is just a list of work, but the stuff that's highlighted up there in blue, that's what's happening in the sprint. So anything that's not highlighted in blue, don't care, right? You can reprioritize that as often as you want. We're not doing any of it until the sprint's over. And that has been fantastic. Uh, the roles we do here, uh, again, we're kind of focusing on Scrum today for me, uh, is we have a development team, so that's, that's good. Uh, we do not have a Scrum Master. We don't have a position like Scrum Master. So what happens is the team sort of decides who's going to be Scrum Master. So it's always a dev that's a Scrum Master. Uh, I say we do it by committee, but it's more revolving. You know, somebody might be a Scrum Master for a few sprints or sprints or two weeks. And most recently, uh, on good advice I got, I used to be the product owner and the manager. And that was problematic, and we can get into that later. But now we've recently hired a business analyst, and now we're, we're, we're really grooming her to become the product owner. She's manager of none. You know, so now the, these ceremonies and these uh, will we'll, you know, we'll go back a little bit, go a little smoother, I think. The Monopoly board. All right, I, got a, I got a quick story about this. Uh, when we started to automate, right, put into some kind of system uh, our stories and tasks and things like that, um, we printed them out and they look like Monopoly cards. So another colleague who really wasn't part of the team thought it would be funny to just pin up a bunch of uh, Monopoly paraphernalia or Monopoly images up there. And I thought it was funny. We laughed at it. And then it also solved a quick problem. What do you call this thing? Is this a task board, a work board? What is this? And when I start calling it a monopoly board, then uh, everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. So when we have to meet daily, you know, just meet us at the monopoly board. Um, two other things happened here. So here we are in a hallway. There's some cubes behind this wall. 
upper management came by and they looked at it and like, you know, even though the CIO wants agile, she, the, the, the upper management person said, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think this looks very professional. I mean, we're IT. We, can't we automate all this stuff? And I mentioned you know, that we want to touch this, right? We want to own these tasks and having them visual, physically moving them actually does something that, that allows you to become more of a part of it. Yeah, but what if a, an elected official walks by and sees this, all these papers and things like that? I go, well, that would be perfect. I can then show them exactly what to do well, exactly where we are on the project at any given time. Well, I don't know. I'm going to hope I have to talk to the CIO about this and she, and they walk off. What I didn't realize was all the developers were hearing this conversation. And I like to visualize it as kind of a three stooges mode, all ear, ear to the wall. Uh, and when I walked around the corner, I was asked, are they going to take this away from us? And that was the very moment I realized that the, the culture had changed, that they, the team wanted this. It wasn't something that management was forcing us to try. It was something that they wanted. And the other moment was we actually showed some courage, right? We stood up to upper management. That was my boss I was talking to and, and telling, you know, what we should be doing. And, and we never got any problem after that. It was fantastic. So we'll just go through standard stand-ups. We have two teams using Scrum in my group. This is the GIS folks talking it over. Here's the app dev team, you know, going through, you know, what did I do yesterday, planning their day, you know, what am I doing today? Um, real quick on this exercise, uh, we, we are developing a, a truancy application, and this is something that the counties do in Texas, and it includes schools and courts and devs and all that, so we brought them all together and went through a, um, a, a uh, story mapping exercise. So this isn't really code. These aren't really tasks. These are personas. These are sort of what is the experience people get uh, when, they, when they engage with this application that we want to write. And we did it before we wrote it. So uh, we're using this even today to guide us through uh, the application build. So here's what Agile looks like in, in Collin County or in a county uh, of about a million people, 500,000 to a million. Uh, the app dev uses Scrum, GIS uses Scrum. We actually have, um, um, we actually have a project with our HR team is actually doing Scrum with us. We're, we're working on a project. That's been a quick and a fantastic win. Records are doing Kanban and our security guy is a little odd. Uh, he calls it Kanban because he's a huge Star Trek fan and he's a fan of the uh, German Autobahn. So we're not quite sure what his duration or what he's working on, but he's, he's up to something. So here's some challenges you might meet. I've got about a minute or so here. Um, the team culture, right? The team has to change. Middle management has to accept this stuff. Uh, what the image I'm showing you is an example of a project we worked on with the customer and the customer didn't want to do this. And you know, here you have a lot of, you know, nothing in progress and nothing done or like a lot of stuff doing, a lot of bottlenecks here. Um, the CIO wants this thing. Well, that's great, but that doesn't mean that everybody wants it. So you can't, agile is about, you know, you have to become agile. You just can't be told to be agile. And then we have pay for performances or, uh, you know, how do you, how do you individually uh, evaluate someone's performance if you're a team? And then individuals often take stories for themselves. Those are a few challenges. The observations, as I mentioned before, management gets to see stuff in, uh, more than you thought. Uh, the customer gets to visualize it. And the, the team, again, another, you know, is focused. And this has been the probably the best part of all of this is they don't worry about anything else. That backlog could be a mile long. Don't matter. I'm working Tim, on what's on the spring. I'm going to, yes. I have to interrupt you here. Um, I would love for you to continue this though in your Q and a room. We're out of time here. Okay. Um, so those of you who want to follow up with Tim, ask him any questions, hear about more of these challenges. Um, you can click the chat icon at the top of your screen and see this link that I'm posting here. All right. Um, or you can stick around and hear Greg Godbout talk about Agile Enterprise and Government. If you decide to go to the Q&A with Tim, don't worry. We're recording all of these talks, and you can get them later on the AGL website. 